Okay, so this video is when your ex is broken up with you and part of her breaking up or him breaking up with you involves them kind of redefining you. In other words, they've, they've become convinced that you're not the right person for them or it can go all the way from you're not the right person for me, I don't know how to get past something, all the way to you're a bad person. Not just that they don't think you're the right person for them, that they think you're a bad person. They think you're dangerous. They've kind of redefined you. They vilified you. Any Anywhere in between. And I would encourage you, listen to the whole thing. I'm going to try not to waste anybody's time. I'm going to jump right into it. But it could start out as one and turn into the other. Or even if this relationship doesn't work out, you might find yourself in a situation where the rest of this does come into play. So jumping right in. The first and kind of the lesser extreme version of this is normally when somebody's been with you for a while, but they break up with you because they realize that in spite of the fact that they still love you and still have feelings for you, they might even tell you they're still attracted to you, but there's just something. There's just something there. There's an anxiety. There's something that you did in the past, and it might not even be like a, an affair or you cheating or that you did something that's just you know, objectively bad. Maybe it's just an imperfection or it's a clash in ideologies or beliefs, something like that. So it can be something as simple as, I just don't know how to get past it. I have anxiety about being with you, and I wouldn't feel this way if we were supposed to be together. So now they framed you as, for some reason, as the person that they just don't feel peace with being with. If you're dealing with that situation, it can be one of the most tempting areas for you to jump in and prove them wrong. Prove them wrong with a conversation. Well, what do you mean that I'm not the one? Can you just talk about that? Can't we just talk about it? I mean, before you're going to throw away the love of your life, you want to know that you had a good conversation out of it, right? You want to know that you actually got to articulate your good reasoning. Fight that impulse. You can present some resistance. You can protest slightly. But keep in mind, it's never attractive as soon as you realize that you're trying to persuade someone into staying with you. Realize you can't convince someone to be attracted to you. You can't talk someone into having the kind of enthusiasm, the kind of excitement and passion that you want from the person you're in a relationship with. So as soon as you hear yourself trying to persuade or convince or out-argue the other person, realize what are you really going to do? Do you really think you can argue somebody into being in love with you? Do you think at some part in that relationship conversation, they're going to go, wow, that's a good point. You know, since you made that point, I think, we, I think we should stay together. Now, strangely enough, if you're dealing with something like borderline or some kind of high anxiety situation, a lot of times that actually will work, but only for a short period of time. There's been a lot of cases that I've talked to. I've seen it happen a lot where somebody will say, I just think we shouldn't be together. I'm sorry, but my anxiety is really high. I don't have any peace. I haven't been sleeping or I've been doing a lot of thinking. And I just know that we can't be together. And I'm sorry I feel this way. There have been times where the other person says, well, I, I think we should. What if we do this, this, and this? And you can temporarily, momentarily talk them back into it. But then you're going to try to reinforce. After that conversation, you're going to have to reinforce that moment. And then you come on too strong. And whatever was compelling them or creating that anxiety to have that initial breakup conversation is going to come back. I can already read some of the comments in the section that doesn't even exist right now. People will say, this happened to me. I know because this happens a lot. So again, forgive yourself if you mount some kind of temporary protest or resistance. It's normal. You want to say something like, hey, listen, I don't, I don't agree with this. This isn't something, this breakup isn't something that I want. It's not something that I would choose. But if you can in the moment, unless it's already too late, obviously, but if you can still give them the breakup, let them know that you don't want the breakup. Be transparent about that part. But keep this in mind. Always, this is true for any relationship. Nobody really wants to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't want to be in a relationship with them. And as soon as you're trying to persuade or convince, imagine that you're now on stage auditioning for the right to be a boyfriend or a husband or a girlfriend or a wife. Does that ever really work? Are you supposed to audition every day? How many times are you going to be on review? You want to be with somebody that not just agrees to be with you. You're not looking for agreement. You're looking for enthusiasm. You're looking for enthusiastic excitement agreement to be with you. If you don't have that, you can't talk them into it. So even in those situations, at the early beginning, say something like, I didn't know you felt this way. I wish you could, you could have talked to me sooner. Maybe you tried to talk to me and I didn't really hear you. Maybe I heard you, but I wasn't really listening. But I, I understand and it's okay. If they give you a list of imperfections and that's why they can't be with you and that's what I mean by they redefined you, I just think that you're too angry. I think that you're too hurt. I think that you're too detached. I think that you just, you don't want the same kind of intimacy that I want. It's, it's been proven over and over. Consistently, we're drawn to people that have characteristics, abilities, and personality styles that we don't share. As long as you have a strong overlap in life goals and in moral code and belief, and there's reasonable levels of mutual attraction 
Those are the things that you need. So just to calm you, if you're listening to this, it's not really the case that if you're not wired the same or you think too differently or that you, you have different interests and, and different things motivate you, that's actually a good thing. But they can convince themselves of those things. Most of the time, it's not really those differences that are behind the breakup. If that's what they're telling you, there's really some kind of anxiety, second guessing, or maybe another person that's actually the cause of it. So don't trust that that's really the reason for the breakup. You can look around and find a lot of couples that are together, that have been together the longest and are the most in love, that are actually wired to be very different from one another. It's a very normal part of a relationship dynamics. The second kind of thing, when they vilified you, Maybe they vilified you and you did do something wrong. Maybe you have been neglecting them. Maybe you did flirt with somebody else. Maybe you cheated with somebody else. Maybe there's, so there's real cause to the event, but that event doesn't actually symbolize you. Own it. Make an apology for it. Be very transparent about it. Don't try to play it too cool. A lot of times nowadays, guys are so afraid of being the doormat to the woman, or they're so afraid of being what they call a simp. They're so afraid of coming across as weak that they don't apologize or they come across as too strong. That's not actually strength at all. That's fake strength. Own it. What women are really attracted to at a primal level is a man who has the attributes, the confidence, the strength, and the self-respect of what you might call the douchebag, but actually has the heart and the strength, the character, and the protective, willing heart of a good man. So you can combine those two things. You don't have to act like you don't care because you made a mistake. That doesn't actually trigger attraction. That doesn't actually make you a high value man. It makes you a it makes you a low value fraud. So if you did something wrong, own it. But if you did something wrong, own it, mean it with sincerity, with humility. But don't chase that one apology with 17 different apologies. In other words, if she if she catches you or you did something wrong, even if you're the one confessing, maybe you went to her because your conscience is bothering you and you confess something. Be transparent, be humble, be sincere, be authentic and change that behavior. Be accountable for that behavior. Like if you were flirting with somebody or cheating with somebody else, not only make the apology, but be understanding when she wants to check your phone. When maybe she wants to check on you for a while after that, that's normal. Let her do that. But if she's using that for the breakup and you keep apologizing, Every time you apologize, you take away strength from that apology. Apologize once, and it shows that you have the willingness, the humility, and sincerity to own your mistake. You have the depth of character to be able to recognize that you did something wrong. Not all people can do that. A lot of douchebags can't take accountability for their, manip for their manipulation. But when you take accountability for it and apologize for it, and that's not enough, and they, maybe they want to break up with you or they're sticking to the breakup. Every time you apologize, it's like it changes that first one from coming from a place of sincerity and strength. And now it starts to seem like it's coming from desperation. Now it starts to seem like, well, it seem like it's coming from um, panic, from a clinginess, from a need. And now it's starting to feel to her that you're too weak. You've already made a mistake, so your values already dropped. You've apologized and you've owned it, but now you won't let it go. Now you can't live with the consequences. Now you're pleading, you're pursuing, you're chasing, you're begging. You already apologized to her four times in person, three times through text. You wrote her a three-page letter. You wrote it in the clouds. You wrote her a poem. You cut your ear off and you sent it to her in the mail and nothing's working. It's because every time you're apologizing, you're framing yourself in a position that looks like you're doing it from desperation and weakness, not from regret and not from strength. Stop, stop telling yourself that when you apologize, you're just proving to her how much you love her and how much you're fighting for this relationship. She's not hearing that. All she's hearing is that you don't know how to live and to move on without her. That projects weakness, even if it's not true. Weakness and desperation are not attractive. So stop trying to calm yourself down thinking you can find the next new way to apologize. It's not going to work. Own it and move on. That helps her reframe you as a man of strength, a man strong enough to apologize and a man strong enough to live without her if he needs to. And that's how you want her to see you. A third type is maybe you are an authentic douchebag. And maybe you're trying to change. Maybe you've messed up a lot. If you've messed up a lot and having this incredible loss in your life, maybe you've been like those, you know, the douchebag terms. I'm an alpha dog. I'm that 1% male. I'm that high end guy. I don't apologize for anything. I sleep with who I want to. I do what I want. And guess what? It's always made her love me more. Well, sooner or later, that's going to play out. And it's not so much that she started reframing you and vilifying you. The truth is, she just woke up. In situations like that, what's happened a lot of times is that bold, loud, obnoxious personality, the one that kind of kicks ass and, you know, the guy that most guys want to be and most girls want to sleep with, and he knows it, and he slept with all those girls, and he's done all those things. Maybe he's very successful and bold and out there and a tough guy. You get the idea. 
But he's fallen in love with a woman or a woman's fallen in love with him that he's learned to take for granted. He knows that he can sleep around on her. She's always wanted to marry him and he's not really sure if he wants to marry her and he doesn't have to worry about it because he knows if he decides to, she's going to be there. And then one day she's not there anymore. If that's you, apologize, own it, be humble. But it took her a long time to get to her place where she decided she didn't want to wait anymore. Where you finally convinced her that you really don't love her as much as she's always loved you and that maybe you're never going to value her enough to actually get the life that she's been chasing with you. So she gave up. It probably took a long time. If this situation fits you, it probably took years for her to finally decide he's not the one for me. She's a slower thinker. She wrestles with anxiety. She wrestles with depression. She wrestles with second guessing everything. She analyzes everything. She's probably very empathetic, long suffering and patient. It took her a long time to give up on you. She's got a lot of evidence telling her why it was the right thing to finally do. And now when you chase her, even though you should chase her because you did a lot of wrong things, that's actually going to sabotage that attraction that she felt for you in the beginning. But you don't have any choice now because you burned too many bridges. She's entered into what we call the numb state. The numb state is what happens when you love somebody for a long time. And while you love them, you keep trying to tell them why you hurt. You keep trying to tell them what you need and how you feel. And over years worth of time, the other person has just decided that they don't care what you need. They're not going to change. They don't care how much you hurt. They're going to do what's best for them. If you stay in that state long enough, it's, it's called conflict. When you stay in that conflict state long enough and you don't ever feel heard or valued or understood, they move into a numb state. A numb state is when it's like subconsciously they started pulling these connections to you. And now this person that loved you more than you ever imagined you could be loved just doesn't feel anything anymore. They're running on empty. They're done. And they might use that wording. A lot of times they'll say something like, I'm just done. I can't do this anymore. If you've done that, don't think that you can make up for five to 10 years of taking that person for granted with one to two months of I'm really, really sorry. Repeated apologies are still going to drop her attraction. So what you have to do in that situation is more thoroughly explain your apology. A key thing you can do to earn back somebody's trust is anytime you can articulate somebody else's pain better than they know how to articulate their own pain. Especially if you're the kind of person that doesn't bother very often to think about somebody else's point of view. Maybe you do wrestle with narcissism. Maybe you're a narcissist. If you are, and you're an, you're an overt narcissist or a classic narcissist, then you, you don't have a lot of experience articulating the hurt of somebody else that you caused. You're not really comfortable in that area. Make yourself get comfortable with that area. Articulate the pain you caused more than you articulate the pain you feel. One of the key mistakes people make, especially manipulators when they're trying to come back, when they come back to try to win you back, they'll say things like, it's been so hard without you. It's been so difficult to live without you. I didn't know I was going to miss you this much. If I had known how much you actually meant to me, I never would have taken you for granted for years. So that person is articulating their pain, but they're not actually talking about the pain they caused you. If you want to build a, a reconnection of trust, articulate to them the pain that you caused them. In other words, instead of coming back and saying, you know, this is so much harder being without you. I miss you all the time. I'm in agony all the time. Please take me back. Say something like, I don't deserve you. I don't deserve that you give me another chance. I hurt you really bad for a long time. And I'm so sorry that I did that. I'm so sorry I made you feel unheard. I'm so sorry for the times that I can remember you tried to tell me. You, you tried so many times. And you were trying so sincerely to just let me know how much you loved me and how much you wanted to be with me. And I didn't listen to you. I can't imagine how much that made you feel like you didn't mean anything to me. And I'm so sorry I did that to you. You see the difference? Articulate the pain that they felt that you caused for years and stop thinking that if they just understood how much pain you were in now, they'd take you back. They know the pain you're in now because you had them in that pain for years. So apologize, articulate their perspective and then give them time. Because another thing a manipulator does is I'm going to come back and tell you how sorry I am and how much pain I'm in. And that's going to make you feel better. And if you feel better, you'll take me back. Why aren't you taking me back? They have no patience. A manipulator has no patience for your pain. They just think if they own it, they accept it and they apologize, we can get back together. And because you don't have the expectation of waiting, it's another hint to them that you haven't really changed. So articulate their pain and then give them time. And if it hurts, good. Pain is what changes character. Pain sometimes is what gives you character. So let it hurt. It'll just help you keep them when they come back. And the last one is, and it's kind of the worst one, it's one of the most painful ones, is when the person that loved you more than you ever thought you could be loved has now really redefined you and it's not true. 
I talk to a lot of people that go through this really painful situation where the person that loved them the most for a short, mid, sometimes a long period of time has now convinced themselves that they're not only bad, but they're dangerous. And more times than not, I'll hear it and it's something in like a, a borderline personality disorder kind of scenario or narcissism. Because it, you're having this extreme swing, it's usually coming from an extreme personality. But I actually hear this a lot more than you might think. It's in this situation, especially with something like borderline, they've split you. Before they idealized you, they saw you as the perfect person, their prince charming, their knight in shining armor. Nobody can live up to being idealized forever because nobody's perfect. And in order to justify their need to get away from you, they'll start vilifying you. They'll start magnifying your flaws. And when they magnify your flaws and you try to like either apologize for them or make up for them or protest against them because some of the things they're accusing you of won't be true. No, 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 that's not true. I was never trying to control you. Well, that's what a controller would say. He keeps calling me to tell me how non-controlling he is. He called me seven times to try to tell me that he's not a stalker. If you're in that situation, it's extremely painful. You're not only losing the person that you love, you're losing how the person loved you, how they saw you. So it feels like you're losing two people. You're losing the best version of yourself. You miss how you felt when you were with them. You miss how you made how they made you feel because they admired you, because they wanted you and they loved you so much. That's a very addictive feeling to, to give up. Now they're not only gone, but they're, it's like they're taking back all those times. It's like they went back in time and they're erasing not just the future that you planned, but they're erasing the past that you already had with them. Because how are you going to remember some of those, those most precious times that you spent with them with any kind of sense of peace when they're not only gone, but you know now that they see you as a villain? Stop reaching out to me. Stop calling me. And I, I have text message screenshots from people that will say something like this from their ex. Um, I hate you. Leave me alone. My whole family is scared for me. My friends hate you. Please leave me alone. Please, I beg you. Two minutes later, answer me. I can't believe you're not responding. You know I hate it when you don't respond. So you could be dealing with somebody that really is suffering from narcissism or borderline. If they're drastically vilifying you and it doesn't apply, I'm begging you. It's the most important thing I can tell you if you're in this situation. Stop thinking that you can convince them, that you can articulate, that you can debate your way into being seen for the person you are. Your pain, your compulsion, is going to actually make it so much easier to frame you as being out of your mind, to frame you as being dangerous, and to actually turn you into a stalker to some degree. In this situation, what's happening is they're triggering so much emotional pain in you that it's like you're emotionally set on fire, and then they'll blame you for acting crazy. Well, if somebody sets you on fire, you're going to act and react and scream and use words and use actions and behaviors that a sane person would look at and think that you've lost your mind, but they don't understand the pain you're in. If somebody accuses you of being dangerous and you know you would never hurt them and you don't have any history or any past of hurting them, but they're claiming it, it creates this very strong compulsion for you to say, no, 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 I would never do that. I would never do that. I'm going to call them. I'm going to write them. I'm going to text them. I'm going to call their mom. I'm going to find whatever desperate way I can find to let them know that I'm not a dangerous person. Everything you're doing, is easily used to frame you as a dangerous person. So I know how hard it is when I say this, but take a deep breath and realize you trying to defend yourself in those moments is only going to work against you. And I'll tell you the same thing your friends and family are telling you. Run away from that person. But if you find that you can't run away from that person, then trust me when I tell you this. If you want to have any chance with that person who's now turned you into a villain, sometimes even a supervillain, if you want any chance with that person, Show that you're strong enough to walk away. They're saying you're dangerous. They're saying that you never cared. And that's another one. You never cared about me. I can't believe. I know why you're not responding because you're probably banging three other women. Jealousy, anger, pity, and sadness. They're all very powerful triggers. So it brings back that person to say, no, 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 no. I'm not with anybody else. No, 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 no. I really did love you. No, I would never do that to you. And you start trying to reset reality. You're just getting pulled into the quicksand. So just restate who you are calmly and then walk away. I'm sorry I made you feel that way. I would never actually hurt you. I'm sorry I made you feel that way. I had no idea. Or better yet, I'm sorry you felt that way. But that's not who I am. And then prove that's not who you are by walking away. That's not just the best thing. I don't say that just to protect you. I say that as an attraction dynamic, even though I hope you don't give them another chance. That's not my call. If you want another chance, Walk away. When you walk away, you're proving that you're strong. You're proving that you're not a stalker. You're proving that you're not dangerous. You're giving strength to that apology. Now that apology you gave 
seems like it's coming from a place of strength because you apologized once and then you prove that you had the strength to walk away by walking away. So don't think that you can argue. Don't think that you don't let it be that that tempting connection to reach back out one more time or 10 more times after a breakup. Getting redefined is like being broken up with twice. Not only are you losing the person that you love, but you're losing the sense that they ever really saw you for who you really are. And that makes you feel like you're losing the best version of yourself too. I know it's painful. If you're going through it, I do one-on-one coaching calls. You can schedule one with me at dotheylovemecom I hope this has been helpful. If you know somebody going through it, I consider sharing it with them because I've been there. I know what it feels like. And sometimes you just need some answers. Having some understanding can take away from that sense of overwhelming pain. So I'll talk to you again soon.